Now, now China has enlarged its footprint in Afghanistan. Uh, what are the pluses and minuses of having uh, China as a big brother? Can the Taliban regime survive solely on China and Pakistan's support? You, if you recall, in the first regime, they had only three countries supporting it. Uh, like, uh, just a few weeks ago, I met with the representatives of uh, special envoys of China, Russia, and Pakistan. Uh, we met together with former President Karzai uh, here. Uh, more or less, they also have the same expectations, more or less, and, and the same concerns. Uh, and uh, their tone might be, might be different. Uh, their expectations might be different, uh, but uh, some of the challenges are the same. Okay, I, I want to also come to uh, an area that, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, seen a lot of the resistance uh, collapsing in, uh, in Afghanistan against the, the Taliban regime. Of course, the Panjshir resistance continues, if not in Panjshir, but at least in neighboring countries. Uh, do you see uh, the Panjshir Valley resistance staging a fight back, or do you think, or do you expect a reconciliation process? Uh, the uh, two things I, I need to uh, refer to, uh, like, uh, uh, first I come to Panjshir. Uh, when there was, uh, uh, the fighting was about to start, prior to that, uh, there were some contacts uh, between Kabul and Panjshir, and there were some uh, efforts in order to av avoid fighting. Uh, I don't go into, into those details of it, uh, the, uh, but it, it, didn't, it didn't work, unfortunately. Uh, and fighting took, did take place, uh, took place in Panjshir, uh, and there have been a lot of consequences. Uh, uh, as a former uh, chair of the reconciliation, uh, I, I always believe in negotiations first. Uh, Afghanistan has been, has been, Afghanistan has been in, in war, at war uh, in the past 40, 42 years. Uh, and the people have paid a very high price. Uh, the, uh, for me, uh, the priority should have been given to, should have been given to the talks in negotiations uh, rather than fighting. But today, of course, it's, uh, it's a, the situation is as it is. Now, uh... You don't fear for your life in Kabul, do you? I mean, in the last time you were a refugee, in some senses in Tajikistan, where we met, uh, you're outside your country, but this time you're here. Uh, what is the role you see for yourself uh, in this? And as I said, your audio was not very good at that time. Why didn't you flee the country and join the resistance movement or go into hiding as Dr. Ghani did? I mean, Ashraf, Ashraf Ghani did, the former president did. Uh, going with Ashraf Ghani and fleeing with Ashraf Ghani and joining a national traitor uh, for his, uh, uh, during his uh, last day in Kabul uh, would, be, would have been the last thing that I would do in my life. Uh, so staying in Kabul was a deliberate decision. It wasn't based on the deal or an understanding with the Taliban, never like that. And then, of course, uh, being with the people which had, uh, uh, which had uh, supported us, uh, which, uh, which, has which had respected us as leaders. And then in the, in the, in the most difficult day of their life, perhaps in the past uh, four decades, leaving them alone uh, was, uh, was something that I thought that I shouldn't do it. Uh, and uh, I decided to stay. Uh, there wasn't any assurance or, or, or any certainty uh, on what would happen, uh, but I don't regret staying here. Today I'm staying here as a citizen of the country uh, and without a, without a role, and I don't expect any role uh, in any system. Nobody has offered, but more than that is that uh, this was, that was not based on me expecting something uh, here in staying in Kabul, just to be with the people. And uh, today also uh, my residence uh, is at least uh, is, is an address uh, for, for the people. Uh, but I know what's the situation in the country uh, and uh, the, uh, what is going on uh, in the country. I'm in contact with uh, uh, Afghan uh, friends and partners uh, outside Afghanistan. 
Uh, that's my current. That is my my 